Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Reverend Osei Wusukovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We bless the name of the Lord for another opportunity to come at his feet. Remember, the virus is still around, so do take good care of yourself and may God richly bless you. Amen. We thank God for another opportunity to be at his feet and we are privileged to celebrate him. Today, let's take our scriptures from the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter number 2. And let's get to the verse number 12. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belai. They knew not the Lord. I want you to understand. On the, the, the term is what? They knew not the Lord. It means they were not born again. They were not believers. They leave. Even though they were sons of the priests. Their life was horrible. Their story tells it all. Hallelujah. And when you consider it, they knew not the law. That is why you see that resource. Amen. Okay. Let's look at the same Samuel, first Samuel chapter number 3, and let's take the verse 7. So if Samuel chapter 3 and the verse... 7, the call of Samuel. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. I want you to know that Samuel had not had an encounter that would change his life and bring him into the prophetic ministry. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the scripture declared that he knew not the Lord. So knowing the Lord will mean First of all, coming into experience with God himself. Having an encounter. So there will be many who have knowledge about God. Knowledge. Knowledge. But they will not have experience. It's very, very necessary you understand it from that perspective. You may have knowledge about God. He is God. He is the Almighty. You know his works. You know many, many, many things about God. You have read a lot about him. But you may not have a personal experience. And with Christ, until you come to the stage where you have a personal experience or an encounter with him, you will not know him. Hallelujah. This is how John puts it. John chapter number 3. John chapter 3. From the verse number 3 to 5. Let's read. John 3 from 3 to 5. He said, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, as said a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. My goodness. That means your eyes cannot even have the perception about who, what the kingdom of God is. The good man said unto him, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The water and spirit is talking about repentance and the new birth. Hallelujah. When you repent, you'll be baptized. And when you are born again, the spirit of God comes to dwell in you. So unless a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You need to repent. And you need to believe to receive a spirit. Then you have the personal experience, what we call knowing God. You get to know him. You know him by experience. Not by somebody's story or Peter's account. Or, but it becomes your own story and your personal experience you have with him. Hallelujah. Good. So let's move on. Jesus made a tremendous statement. And I want you to take note of it. Please open your Bible. Let's go there. In John chapter number 5. From verse number 13. 
39 to 40, Jesus made a powerful, very, very strong statement. Search the scriptures. For in them you think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. Mm. But they are they who speak of me. And let's get to the verse 40. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. When you put these scriptures together, it made a lot of impression. Look. There might be many knowledgeable people about religious and Christianity. You can study. You may have your doctorate. You may be even a professor. And you may be teaching and instructing people in the ways of the Lord. But brother, it is not what you know that gets you saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> what you know should bring you to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you study the scriptures to know it and what you know will bring you to Christ, then you can be saved and be born of God. But if you will not study to know it, sir, you study the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. Yes, by studying the scripture because of the scripture says you study the scripture and you become wise unto salvation. Yes. But it, what does that mean? It means you search the scripture and you discover the way of God unto Christ. If you search the scriptures and it is not leading you to Christ, the Savior, Christ the Messiah, Christ the Healer, Christ the Son of God, Christ oh, the Anointed One. If you study the scriptures and it's not leading you to Christ, you are only compiling knowledge. Why? Why could Jesus say such a thing? But hear this. The truth is this. The scripture have declared that in him is life. All that you are desiring is in Christ. He is the savior of the world. You can't receive life outside of him. In him is life. In fact, Jesus said in John chapter number 11 and verse number 25. John 11, 25. A popular scripture. Let's read it. John 11, 25. Jesus said what? Well, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, shall, yet shall he live. Listen. He is, I am. The resurrection and life. And the life. I want you to take that notice of that. The article there. I am the resurrection and the life. If you are thinking about having life, eternity, having life and enjoying goodness of life, it is loaded in a person. He is Jesus Christ. So if you search the scriptures, if you study the scripture, and it does not lead you to knowing him, it does not need you to know in Christ. You miss the whole thing. You become a theologian. You become a religious somebody. You become a Pharisee. A critic. A critic. There are people who write papers. They are critic. Hallelujah. But being a critic do not save. Life and salvation is in a person. He is the resurrected one. Life is in him. <laughs> All that you are searching for, all that you are in, is in a person, is in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is a Savior of a world. He is the anointed Son of God. He is a Messiah. He has all power. He has all authority. It's given to him. So our search in the scriptures, our study in the scripture, should bring us a revelation about Jesus Christ. When you are desiring... To be filled with the spirit. Hear this. The scripture says what? The scripture says Jesus is what? The baptizer of the Holy Spirit. And he shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days hence. Go and wait. And you'll be filled with the spirit. And he gave those instructions. And he said in my name you'll be baptized with the spirit. 
John the Baptist bear testimony of these things. And so if I am desiring about the things of the spirit, when I study the scriptures, it might lead me to Christ the baptizer. It might lead me to Christ the savior. It might lead me to Christ the healer. It might lead me to Christ the second coming king. Because all these things are embodied in a person. That is why when you don't have him, you have no hope. Brother, when you neglect Jesus Christ, I don't know what you're looking for. Go and search for it. But the scriptures have made it clear. You may not believe it, but they have made it clear. That look, all power in heaven and in the earth are given to me. All power, all power. All these things are loaded in him. And so when we say we are preaching the gospel or we are preaching Christ, what do we mean? Precisely what do we mean? We are talking about a person. We are talking about the son of God. We are talking about the Messiah, the savior of God. He is the one who offered himself to be a ransom for all of us. He is a propitiation for sin. He is the anointed healer. He is my God, the most high. He is the second coming king. And so my search in the scripture should lead me to discover who this person is. Because in him is life. In him is life. Outside of him is death. There's no name given among men by which we should be saved than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We have come to discover. And look at how Paul puts it. Now, I want us to get to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. And let's start reading from verse 1. We want to look at the gospel and what it means. Hallelujah. Are you there? Come on, let's get there. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, uh -huh. by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Paul is saying, keep these things in memory. Keep it. Believe it. Hold on. Dear. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Listen, that is the number one point. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That is a fact. It is the thing that happened. It happened at Calvary's cross. One afternoon, he gave himself a ransom to be crucified in a broad daylight. When all the crowd and the people in Jerusalem were yelling and crying for him, his crucifixion. He died for the sins of the whole world. He paid a price. Broad daylight, he died. It's no mystery. A Golgotha covered his cross. He paid that price. And so Peter is stating facts. He said, Christ died, died for our sin according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. I want you to know when he died. They removed him from the tree and buried him in a brand new sepulcher uh, of Joseph of Arimathea. He had made a brand new sepulcher. He was thinking that that would be the place he was a rich man. That was the place he had prepared to be buried himself. But he gave it over that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, would be buried there. You see, so Jesus Christ was buried. <laughs> the history and the facts are there. He was buried and that he rose again the third day. Hallelujah. Jesus rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Brother, sister, hear me. He was killed. He was buried. And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is not the end of the story. Mm. He and he was seen by Peter. Then by then the, of the twelve. Listen. Some people say he is missing, he left in the spirit. We could not see him. But God, by his plan, makes sure there were many people who will see him. Of course, not those who killed him, but those who believe in him. <laughs> 
It is happening the same time. You see, so Peter saw him. And the twelve also. They all saw him. They met with him. And when you read the scriptures, mm, <laughs> before he left, when he rose from the dead, mm, let's get to these scriptures. Very interesting. In Acts chapter number <laughs> verse 41. Acts 10 41. Let's read that before we move to 15. Huh? Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God. Even unto us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. When he rose from the dead, he went to a dinner with his friends and his disciples and many others. He met with them. They died. In fact, the, the real account can be found in Luke chapter number 24. Luke 24. And let's start from verse number 41. Luke 24. And while they were yet believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? 42. <laughs> and they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. Uh -huh, for his ray. And he took it and did eat before them. Listen. So you see, he, is, he was dead, crucified, buried, rose again, appeared before those witnesses, chosen before of God, who should see him. And he came to their company. They were doubting and said, he is a spirit. Some people said, he got resurrected and got into the spirit. He never got, he has a spiritual body. He's a resurrected person. None, nobody have that type of body. So you can only make speculation. Why? We don't have anybody which can be touched, which you can feel, and yet walk through walls. Are you here with me? So it's a, it's a spirit. It's not spirit. It's a spiritual person. That one is not in this life. It's from a high. It's from, it's a resurrected person. Jesus Christ, the son of God. Who rose again from the dead. And so you see, if we don't understand it, well, we don't believe it. He rose again. We did not see him. He went, no. The scripture said, those who were there, those who are his friend, he showed up to them. He asked for food. He ate with them. In fact, in John 20, he said, Thomas, Thomas said, as for me, on, he is a scientist. Unless I feel it, unless I touch it, seeing is believing. Not only seeing, I want to touch it. And he said, so Thomas, come and feel my palms. See the prints of the nails. See my feet. Come and see, examine me. But why, why? It's a mystery body. It is not in this life. The resurrected person is higher than we think. It is higher than we can imagine. It is higher. You see, so when we talk about God, brother, don't sit at your corner and say, you think you know more than God. We are talking about the creator. The things I have not seen, the ear, ears I have not heard, they are those he has prepared. He knows what he's doing. He's not like you and me. We are limited in the body and we are limited in our scope of thinking and imagination. But we talk about God who is the almighty. And now he has given as a resurrected person. It's a mystery to us because our minds and our heart cannot comprehend. That is why we only have to believe, brother. You cannot understand and you cannot biologically say a person with body going through war, how? A person with body ascending high. Yes. Yes. That is a resurrected person. He can go and defy any natural law. And he can yet also come and eat with men. You see, so these natural senses cannot reason that out. It is higher than you think. 
It is, he is bigger and greater than you think. That person who went to hell and came out, went to the grave, who was buried, he went to hell and came out. And now he is alive forevermore. And hear what he has said. He said, all power, all dominion, all might is given to me. I have power in heaven and on the earth and in hell. And the scripture have declared that he is given a name which is above every other name. That day when he was coronated for being obedient to the father unto the death at the cross and dying and resurrected and then getting to heaven. He was highly exalted in heaven and given a name above every other name. The other name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is God to the glory of God the Father. This is who he is. And now, because he is glorified, and we have been given a privilege of knowing him. When we get to know him, we experience his life. If you don't know him, you are outside of him, brother. You cannot know it. Hallelujah. Don't sit down and then you read some theories and then you think you know anything about God. What are we saying? We are talking about the creator. We are talking about the giver of life. We are talking about the one who has power to die and to rise again. We are talking about one who ascended literally with his body before over 500 people after his resurrection. It was not a private thing. Not a private ascension. No. It was among many people, 500, more than 500, according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number When you read these things, and then you begin to understand who this person is. And I'm saying that resurrected person, who is highly exalted and given a name above every other name, is bigger than you think. You cannot comprehend him. You cannot just get to know who they is. All that you can do about Jesus is simply humble yourself and believe him. And when you believe him, now he will begin to manifest himself in you. You will begin to taste of his love and you taste of his life. Yes, in him is life. But you, when you stay outside there, you are trying to reason it out by logic and reasoning. It doesn't work that way. But when you believe, when you turn to him and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, then he will manifest himself. You get to know what it means to be saved. Anybody who is saved knows what I'm saying. Many have experienced it. What does that mean? It means, look, you come to him one day, you were a sinner. You, you know what you know you are a sinner? Yes, your own conscience tells you. You commit a sin. You know you are guilty. But when you come to here and repent, your sins are forgiven and they are washed away and your conscience is purged according to the scriptures. That is what has happened. And when you experience and the sins are forgiven and it's it been washed and cleansed, brother, when you are living in guilt, don't you know? Ah, when you are hiding because of sin, you do certain things you are giving, you want to cover it. There are people who want to kill others because they know, so, they know too much. When people get to know many things about you, you, you know my secret, so I want to kill you, eliminate you. But what about yourself? What about yourself? You kill people to cover yourself. What about yourself? Don't you know? Do you kill yourself? You want to leave, but you don't want anybody to see that you are a bad man, a bad person. But you see, God knows everything. So if you admit your fault and say, Lord, I have sinned and come to him, he will forgive and take away the sin. He will take away your guilt. He will take away the condemnation and give you life. Mahatia, that is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. When you get to know him, you experience life. It is not, listen, how you feel I try to do, it is not do good. It is experiencing a person who receives and embrace you, forgive your sin, take away all that you have done wrong, wash your conscience and make you free. If the son therefore shall make it free, ye shall be free indeed. He is a deliverer. He is a savior. He is a forgiver of sins. 
He washes us with his own blood. This is a person. But how do I know him? When you hear his gospel being preached. All you need, there are basic requirements. Believe that it is the truth. And accept your state of being. I am a sinner. Because the scripture said, all have sinned. From the highest priest to the lowest man. All of us. There is none righteous. No, not one. That is the indictment on all humanity. There is nobody who can say this one is a perfect person. No, there is none. None righteous. No, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that is the state of our being. That is the indictment of all of us. But when Jesus came, he came to take away our sins. He died for the, for the sins of many. He paid a price to redeem us from bondage and captivity. That he will set us free and give us life. Give us another opportunity to live into eternity. This is Jesus Christ. Nobody can do such an act. Hallelujah. You see, when you accept Jesus Christ that he comes into your life, this experience is the most wonderful thing that can happen to you. Ah, things remove and wash. Constant passed by the blood. Spirit filled. Hallelujah. Life becomes so sweet and beautiful. Probably what I'm saying is, is some area and what he's saying. Oh, these people. These, it's not these people. It's the reality of life. It's the reality of the life of Christ. I invite you to come to him. He is the Savior. It's not me. It's Jesus. He is the Savior of your soul. He is the one who wants to help you. He is the one who wants to deliver you. He will wash you of all sin and set you free. From every bondage and captivity. This is what he has done for all humanity. But you need to believe. When you hear this gospel preach. When you hear the facts stated. When you hear who he is. And the power. He now has. All you need to do is. You humble yourself and say Lord. Forgive me I have sinned. Because Peter said. They asked Peter what should we do. After hearing this gospel. On the day of Pentecost. Uh, chapter number 2, verse 8, 38. He said, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Thank God. When you repent and you are baptized, you repent and believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sins will be forgiven and you will be washed. <laughs> that is Jesus for you. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank God, when we have been washed, when the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed us from all sin, now we are ready for the Spirit. It's for us. It's a gift from God. And when we turn to Him, there is a promise for us, and you can receive it. Now the truth is this. Anyone who repents and comes to Jesus, God said, that is why I invite you now, and I want you to come. Nothing should restrain you today. Because this is your time. The Bible said, now is the hour. Now is your moment. I call on you that come to Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Turn away from all your problem and all that you are crying about. He will forgive and set you free and give you another opportunity. He will be your savior and bless you. How do I know him? I turn one day from my own ways and I came to him and he saved me. There are many like that. He has saved. In fact, there are many people walking there. So are there some people holy? Are some, there are some righteous? Yeah, there are many people who are holy. In this life, they are righteous people. They are those who believe in Jesus. They are those whose sins have been forgiven. They are those born of God who are ready for heaven. I am waiting that he will come. And I will leave this one. Hear me somebody. The truth is this. He wants to save your life. And I'm coming your way this time. Calling your you now. And the truth is I want to be praying with you now. Jesus the son of God. Want to save you. He wants you to come into. He wants to come into your heart. I want to be your savior. And then you will know him. Listen. Unless you believe. Uh, you cannot see. 
unless you believe, there shall not be the manifestation of God's love and grace in you. And the scripture said in Romans chapter number 10, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Very interesting. That if thou shalt confess of thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You so you don't believe with your head, you believe with your heart. After declaring these truths to you, all I urge you and encourage you is that embrace them. Believe it with your heart. And then get, move on to experience what it means to be saved. To experience the manifestations of a life of God in believers. Because you cannot be outside there and knowing what is inside. When you believe, you come into the family. When you believe, you become a child of God. When you believe, you are born of God. You receive his spirit. That is why I encourage you to come. That is why I want you to believe. And how do you believe? After you are hearing. The scripture said, For with the heart man believe it. I believe that you have believed with all your heart. And now you need to make a confession unto salvation. When you believe, you make a declaration. So I want to be praying for you. But today I want you to make a declaration. And give your life to Jesus. That is why we normally, we say, Give your life to Jesus, come. Yeah, because the truth is that when you believe, you need to confess. Public declaration. You don't hide it. You don't hide it. Because we are not ashamed of Jesus Christ. We are not ashamed. We are willing to be identified with his death and resurrection. We are willing to be identified with him. And then taste of his goodness. When we believe, then the manifestations of a life of Christ, the reality of Christianity will begin in your life and then you will test of it. Otherwise, you will be outside trying to know what is inside. It doesn't work that way. Believe. Come inside there and let Christ work it out in you. Can you get on your feet? Everyone, I'm trusting the Lord that even as you yield yourself to him, your life will never be the same. May God bless you. Hallelujah. We want to make this declaration. I want you to believe with all your heart that the things you are saying are scriptures and you believe with your heart. <laughs> and as we pray, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I believe you died for my sins. You were buried. And on the third day you rose again from the dead. Thank you Lord that you ascended to the Father. And you are now seated at the right hand of God. Father. Now. I embrace you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me all my sins. Thank you for the blood. That cleanses me from every guilt and condemnation. I bless your name for your mercies toward me. I worship and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are making this confession and believe with your heart, know that with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, God has declared you righteous. Not that you have not sinned before. But the blood of Jesus, God's son, has cleansed you from every sin. And we of your mouth, you confess unto salvation. As you declare Jesus as your Lord. And as you continue in the faith, you begin to uh, the walk in the faith. Now, I want to encourage you that you stay on and then live your life. As you find a good church and, st and study the scriptures and learn more about Jesus Christ. You will love him the more. The more you get to know him. The more you love him, God bless you. Shall I pray for you? May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. May his countenance shine over thee. May the favor of the Lord reach toward you. And may God, grace and mercy that abound in Christ manifest in your life. May the Lord manifest himself. And let the mercies of God be your portion. And may the joy of the Lord fill your heart. May God meet every need of yours in Jesus' name. 
Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For having time with the general overseer, you can follow Reverend Russell Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-61-4965. Thank you and God bless you. I will see the